Hello, Blythe, Evie, Joe, Jack, Callum, Cadence, Lucy, Orion, and anyone else who's listening. Welcome to Storytime. Today's story is Three Days on a River in a Red Canoe, written and illustrated by Vera B. Williams. It was also a reading rainbow book at one time. Three Days on a River in a Red Canoe by Vera B. Williams. This book is all about a three-day camping trip in a red canoe. It's really fun. The dedication is, it says, thanks for rivers and friends, big and small. So the story begins. I was the one who first noticed the red canoe for sale in a yard on the way home from school. There's the canoe in the yard and it says, for sale, ask at house. My mom and my Aunt Rosie and my cousin Sam and I put our money together and bought it. The people who sold it to us threw in two paddles and two big old life jackets. So look, they're carrying it home over their heads with the with Sam carrying the life jackets and the little girl carrying the paddles. As soon as we got home with the canoe, Aunt Rosie and Mom took out their maps. The canoe trips they had taken before Sam and I was even born were marked in colors. They found a three-day trip that could be just right for us. Then we made lists of what we needed. Then we went shopping. Here are Sam and I in the store in new life jackets. They cost a lot, but Aunt Rosie and Mom agreed we had to have them. And an extra paddle. And 20 feet of new rope. We also bought some packages of freeze-dried chicken and some dried apricots. Freeze-dried chicken means that you can uh, boil it up and make it more like fresh chicken. It's a light, easy way to carry something when you're hiking or canoeing. So on the map, you can see their route. It's on, uh, it's in red and it shows a good starting place and a very nice section. And then it's marked watch for falls, mosquitoes bad here in June. Um, and then there's moose on one side, nice campsite. There's a dam. So they have really a good plan for where they're going. Here is everything we need for the trip. The food is packed tight in waterproof sacks. My cat, Six Toes, is sitting on a sleeping bag. I wanted to take him, but Mom says a canoe is no place for a cat. I promised Six Toes to bring him back a fish. Next to my shoes and Sam's shoes are new pocket knives. We never even noticed Aunt Rosie buying them for us in the store today. So do you see all their different equipment and... Uh, Things for repairing the canoe, ropes, uh, things for them to cook with, um, fishing gear, a first aid kit. And then there's a bag of dried apricots and then a bag that has, it says it's pancake and dumpling mix. And it's three cups of flour, four and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of powdered milk. And they'll use that later on in the story. Here we are on our way early in the morning. We drove and 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 drove. Whew, this is a long trip. 
We drove and drove. We drove all day. Now we are at the place Aunt Rosie and Mom had chosen for our first camp. We start on the river in the morning. Sam and I unloaded the car. Mom and Aunt Rosie put up the tent. We hurried to get inside before it got too dark and the mosquitoes took too many bites out of us. We lay in our tent listening to the river. When I poked my head out in the morning, Everything was wet, yet it wasn't even raining. We couldn't see our car. We could hardly see the river. See, the the river is uh, uh, colder than the air, so there's a fog that comes over. And then the tent is covered with dew, the early morning uh, drops of water. We carried our canoe down to the water anyway. Here we are setting out for a small island. It shows on the map. We've packed all our things into the canoe. We are going to fix our breakfast on the island when the sun warms up the river and dries up the mist. So once the sun comes up and the river gets warmer, then the mist and the fog will go away and they'll be able to see better. Our first morning on the river. This is where we come out of the mist. Do you see? And then there's this island. I'm making the first fire of the trip. Do you see? She's holding the branches to make a fire. Sam tries paddling. Sam is in the canoe trying to paddle. I try paddling. Do you see the person up in the front paddling? We find crayfish. Ooh, so that may be what they'll have for their dinner. We eat our lunch on top of this cliff. It's an apartment house for swallows. Swallows are a kind of bird. Do you see them? And do you see the fox across the river and the rabbits? We get to the bottom fast. It looks like they rolled down from where they ate lunch to get to their canoe. Then they find a good swimming hole. Do you see them swimming in the river? And then up at the very top, we canoe on. That looks like a great first day on the river, doesn't it? Here are Mom and Aunt Rosie paddling into a part of the river like a hot green tunnel. I fell asleep. I think Sam did too. It's good Mom and Rosie didn't. Right here is where they heard the roaring of the waterfall, but they had been listening for it. It was marked on their maps. Here I am looking over the edge. Do you see she's standing on that rock looking over at the waterfall? So they're going to have to take the canoe um, to the side and over the waterfall. Aunt Rosie and Mom are lowering the canoe by ropes down over the waterfall. Sam and I climb up and down until we have carried all the gear to the bottom. We are going to camp here even though it's still early. Here's our shower. (laughs) Look how she's standing under the waterfall. This is called a portage. Uh, when you have to take the canoe out of the river and move it in a safer way than just going down the river because you don't want to go over a waterfall in a canoe. This is our kitchen. Aunt Rosie is the cook tonight. We're going to try the crayfish we caught along with our chicken and rice. For dessert, Aunt Rosie showed us how to cook fruit stew and dumplings. This is the sink. You can stand right in it. The rocks make all the shelves and drain boards you need. We use the sand as scouring powder. It's pretty smart, isn't it? Mom shows us some knots we can use to tie up the canoe and in putting up the tent. Do you see the picture of the two half hitches? You pass the rope around a tree or a stump. With your left hand, you hold the rope at the point 
where it crosses over the longer part of the rope, that would be the part that is attached to the canoe. With your right hand, you reach through the loop for the short end of the rope. You pull the end through and tighten the loop. Then you do the same thing uh, with from the second and third steps. You hold the rope at the point where it crosses over the longer part of the rope and with your right hand you reach through the loop and pull the end through and tighten the loop. And then you have two half hitches, which if you pull tight on the rope, like the if the canoe pulls tight on it, then it, it will stay. It'll just, the the knot will just keep tightening. So it's a good knot for camping and for canoeing. So I wanted to show you how to tie two half hitches in case you want to practice. So I just borrowed this uh, rope from Pappy and I'm tying it around uh, one of my daddy's old canes. Um, so like this is the longer end where I'm pulling with this hand, see? This would be the part that's attached to the canoe. Then you take the shorter end and wrap it around the trunk of the tree, which is where you'd be tying it. Then you hold onto it with, with your left hand where the two cross. And then with your right hand, you reach through and pull through tight. Then you do the same thing. See, you make another loop like that, reach through and pull it through and pull it tight. Those are two half hitches. Do you see them? One, two. And then if the, the boat gets pulled real hard by the current or or something or the wind your two half hitches will be tight they'll stay tight because they won't and the, you could do the same thing with for a tent so you could practice that you don't need a bonfire to cook on Aunt Rosie made this kind of fire she kept it hot by adding small sticks and then this is they make the dumplings and remember I read the dumpling pancake mix and they add a half a cup of water to one cup of that and they make a well in the mix pour in most of the water mix quickly use only enough water to make a dough as thick as soft ice cream lumps don't matter and you push little spoonfuls fulls of dumpling into the simmering fruit as fast as you can. You cover it and cook until the dumplings are just done, but not hard, about 10 minutes. And then this is her recipe for fruit stew. Three handfuls of dried apricots or peaches, honey or sugar to sweeten it, and about three cups of water. You add enough water to the plastic bag to cover the fruit, and you do that when you first make your camp so that it will be uh, softening. When you're ready to cook, you put the fruit, all the water, and the sweetening in a pot. You cover and boil slowly, but stir often. You don't want the apricots to burn. If the water cooks away, you add more water, this fruit stew should be juicy. You cook till the apricots are soft, about half an hour. And right in like 20 minutes, you would put the dumplings in. P.S. Don't burn your tongues. We burned ours. They must have eaten their fruit stew and dumplings pretty quickly, right after it came out of the pot. Sam and I put up the tent by ourselves. It's hard to get the pegs in tight so they don't pull out. The pegs are what holds the ropes in. Aunt Rosie told me to use the back of the axe head. Sam used a rock. So you, you 
tighten the rope and you put the peg in to the ground to hold the rope tightly and you pound on the peg with the back of an axe or with a rock, a heavy rock. You have to pull the cords tight too so the tent won't be like an old balloon. And you have to tie a kind of knot you can untie easily. That's where like the two half hitches works well. This is an extra roof called a fly. The tent cloth has to let in air. So by itself, it can't be waterproof. So the fly is what keeps the rain from uh, making the tent leak. After supper, we build up our fire and sit beside it. Mom tells us stories about the animals that like the nighttime. We watch the stars and the sparks of our fire going up to join them. Ooh, fun. Sam isn't much of a weather predictor, but the rain didn't bother us. We put up the tent so well Hardly a drop of water came through. In the morning, we sat up in our sleeping bags and ate crackers and raisins. Aunt Rosie made cocoa on the little camping stove. We set out on the river with all our things, even though it was pouring rain. I am shaking my paddle at the sky and yelling. Do you see her shaking the paddle up? Suddenly, as we came around this bend in the river, the sun came out through a hole in the clouds. A big rainbow spread across the sky. Wow, look at that rainbow. The rainbow faded away and fish started to jump all around us. We got the fishing lines baited and into the water. Sam caught the first fish. Then I caught one. Then Aunt Rosie caught two in a row. Afterward, we spread out our things to dry on a sandy beach. Look at all the different types of fish there are in the river. There are uh, spotted sunfish, bullhead catfish, redfin pickerel, yellow perch, scale gar carp, brook trout, black crappie, common white sucker. Wow, lots of different fish. What mom and Aunt Rosie like to do best is take the canoe through fast moving water. They can follow all the curves of the current. In the afternoon, we canoe without stopping. Sam and I paddle too. We came to a place where the river spread out through a meadow. Grass grows right out of the water, and we canoed in the grass. It came up over our heads and hid us. Aunt Rosie put her hand over my mouth so I wouldn't frighten away the moose and her calf. But even so, when they got wind of us, they ran back into the woods. Do you see that big moose and her little baby moose called the calf? And then once they could smell the humans. That's what she means when they got wind of us, they ran away. When we discovered this island, we all agreed it was the place to spend our third night. We planned to sleep right out under those trees. The tent is up just in case of rain. The Big Dipper is out. The Milky Way is spread right across the sky. There isn't one mosquito because of the breeze. Oh, wow, that looks perfect, doesn't it? Look at them sleeping outside. That breeze turned into a wild wind in the middle of the night. Mom says it was almost hurricane strength. We caught the tent and the canoe just before the wind carried them off down the river. Whoa, that would have been awful if they'd lost their tent and their canoe. We did lose one pot and one cup. We spent the rest of the night curled up in the bushes. The branches creaked and whooshed all night long. Whoa, that is quite a windstorm, isn't it? Look at them 
gathering up their cooking equipment and their canoe and the tent and making it safe again. In the morning, we can't believe this is the same river. It's so still. Twigs and leaves and flowers float around us as we start our last day on the river. We watch a muskrat swimming. A heron dives for fish. We feed crumbs to the ducks. Cows watch us having a river visit. Do you see the whistling swan, the mallard duck, the Canada goose, the muskrat swimming in the water, the great blue heron that dives for a fish? And then they're having a river visit with another uh, canoe that's there on the same river and the cows are watching them from the banks. We canoe through a town. We come to a slow stone bridge. Sam gets excited. He stands up to wave. Mom yells, sit down. I reach over and pull him down. Aunt Rosie and Mom brace hard on the other side. This keeps our canoe and everything in it from turning over, but Sam ends up in the water. He swims to the rope Aunt Rosie throws out to him and we tow him to shore. Mom doesn't say much, but she looks upset. Aunt Rosie looks scared. Sam changes to dry clothes and we canoe on. See, he stands up to wave at the people on the bridge, but you're never supposed to stand up in a canoe. It's easy to fall out that way. Just past the train bridge, Aunt Rosie asks Sam to stand up and see what's ahead. So now he is standing up. He gets up as though the canoe were a baby's cradle. He's being very careful. He reports that the river is ending in a big lake. He says it looks like the edge of the world on the other side. Aunt Rosie says that's because we're coming to the town dam. Mom points the canoe to cross the lake. There's no current and the wind is against us. I'm glad it's slow going. When we get to the other side, our trip will be over. Oh, so see they're canoeing across the lake to the other side. Wow, look at how beautiful she made the water look. And here we are taking our canoe onto the bank. And Aunt Rosie showed me on the map where the river goes from here. She says it travels on through rocky places with lots of rapids. Someday, after lots of practice, we can go there. But now we must catch a fish for my cat Six Toes. And Aunt Rosie is going to talk with other campers and find a lift back to our car, Ladybug, so we can get home tonight. Mom says canoeing back up the river against the current would be very, very hard, even if we had time. See, the current goes in one direction. So when you're, if you have to canoe up the river, you're going in the opposite direction that the current is flowing. And the, the, that's like you're, you're canoeing or paddling against the force of the water. So it's really hard. It would take a long time. Way past midnight, we turn into our own street. One by one, we stumble into the house. I go to sleep to the sound of six toes chewing on his fish. It seems I can still hear the sound of the river running over the rocks. The end. Wow, what an adventure. Three days on a river in a red canoe. That was really fun to read. I hope you liked that. Tomorrow, we will be reading Full, Full, Full of Love, written by Trish Cook, illustrated by Paul Howard. You keep taking care of yourselves 
Keep loving on each other. Always, always love yourselves just the way you are. And never forget, I love each one of you to the moon and back. We'll be back tomorrow for story time when we read Full, Full, Full of Love. Bye-bye.